Good morning. It is November 18th today, Thursday, one week from Thanksgiving. Wow. So <clears throat> now, I don't know if you're aware of this. I got this little thing down here that's saying that, that whoops, sorry. Oops. <laughs> it says I can add guests onto this so wouldn't that be awesome so maybe i should start doing that the first three that log in i'm gonna make you a guest <laughs> i don't know better get dressed if you're gonna be on here no no wearing pajamas when you're uh, on the facebook live so we're not going to walmart people we're we're looking at the bible today so <laughs> Uh, well, good morning. I I don't know if you guys get this, but I had it on there this morning. Had, had a had a thing pop up at the very beginning of the old Facebook and wanted me to take the survey for the 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 COVID. So you gotta be careful what you say around here; they'll flag you, right? So wanted me to take a survey so they could determine the spread of this stuff, and and I'm like. Well, I, I would take a survey if you'd ask the right questions. Like, do, do you believe that, that um, Fauci is a low-life uh, scum of the earth that ha has uh, uh, made people a guinea pig for his trials? Yeah, I believe that. Do you believe that the politicians have politicized this virus and, and made it... Uh, out to be what it's not. Yes, I do believe that. I believe that all these politicians, one day God's judgment's coming down so hard on your head. And so, <laughs> bring it on. Give me that kind of, uh, you give me that kind of a survey and I'll be happy to answer. Oh, look at that. See, I got this vase. See that? And I, my lighting in my studio here sometimes gets a little bright so i moved this vase around with the flowers in it to block the sun see i mean we we are very technical uh here at my studio so <laughs> <clears throat> so all right and i uh i should probably get into this and forget the politics so it, it does look like, oh, maybe Kamala Harris is on the way out the door. So, that oh, that's a picture. Oh, I'm sorry. This is not a vase. This is a picture. So, eh, excuse me. <laughs> All right. So... It's a good day, isn't it? Paul and Sarah Crow took off this morning. Um, Dwight and Amber, they, uh, they took off from the church early this morning. Dw uh, Paul and Sarah left at around 8. And then, um, I'm not sure what time Dwight was planning on getting out of here around 4. I think it was about 5 before he got out of there. So, uh, and I know Andrew and Susanna probably had headed out today too so yeah so it's kind of I guess we're back to what you would say is normal I don't know what normal is but we're kind of back into normal and my running around is done so all um, don't plan on going anywhere for a while Kareth and Matt are coming out uh, for Christmas so Teresa and I aren't going there um, for Christmas, they're coming here. I'm, I'm thinking maybe Teresa and I might go out there in February sometime and see them. I think it'd be good to do so, but we shall see what what brings in uh, that time. But right now we're home and looking forward to getting back into things. Next week, we have our church uh, Christmas dinner on Tuesday night. We already got well over a hundred people signed up for that. And love to see a couple hundred people come to 
that Thanksgiving dinner. It's going to be uh, always an enjoyable time and love being around our people. And uh, so, yeah, it's uh, it, it is a good day. It is a beautiful day, sunny. However, it was a little nippy this morning. Uh, we had 10 degrees outside, so Brian, we may actually beat you guys today. I'm sure Meeker wasn't very warm either, but uh, I don't know. 10 degrees is pretty chilly. It might be hard to beat. So, <clears throat> but we uh, we're we're getting right along. It's hard to believe, isn't it? Less than a week ago, we were over 70 degrees, and now we are uh, 10 degrees. <laughs> no wonder people have pneumonia. No wonder they get colds, right? So, all right. Well, we better get into this. And and uh, <clears throat> first, first thing I was, uh, yeah, you guys need snow. I bet. I thought Steamboat got some snow, but maybe uh, um, maybe Meeker didn't get any of that. I thought Rabbit Ears kind of got thumped on there a while back. But uh, Nick, I agree. That is more than a little cold. <laughs> <laughs> had an old cowboy who used to tell me that that oh Dennis and Deanna had nine this morning <clears throat> I had an old cowboy tell me he says I put my long johns on the first of October and don't take them off till the first of May <laughs> <Ooh. clears throat> alright <clears throat> alright well, let's get into this. I, I read Proverbs 18 and, and uh, verse 16. It says, man's gift maketh room for him and bringeth him before great men. And it just reminds me that um, what are our gifts for? You know, are they to bring us and present us in front of uh, great men? Or, you, you know, you, you have these people that have tremendous voices and... Uh, but they they sing they sing songs that have nothing uh, glorifying in them at all for God. God's the one that gave them that voice. Yeah, they worked hard at it and and developed their voice by training and dedication. But uh, God's still the one that gave them that gift. And our athletes of the day, God has given them some great physical abilities, and and uh, they. Um, have just used it for themselves and made themselves wealthy and, and promoted themselves. And, and, uh, what, what are our gifts for? Uh, I mean, God, God gave us those gifts and we need to use our gifts for God's glory. You might be thinking, well, I'm not gifted at all. Yes, you are. God, God has equipped you and God has given you certain gifts and yeah, they, they might not be the same kind of gifts that other people have, but God has given you gifts and you need to use your gifts for God's glory, for God's honor, and and use your abilities that you have. I, I mean, that's uh, you know that that's what we need to do, and and let's make sure that we do that. And don't get so get don't get so lost in yourself and think that it's about you because it's really. I, I mean, I'm not trying to be mean, but it's not about you. It's about bringing honor and glory to the Lord, and and allowing Him to use us however way that he wants and so that was the first thing and then I had my daily reminder I, I mean how many times do we need to be reminded that God's in charge and that God's got things under control but in Proverbs 28 verse 1 the wicked flee where no man pursueth but the righteous are bold as a lion and I, I mean God God has has won the battle and God has all things under control and, and things are going to be okay. And the thing that we need to do is live for him and trust him and, and walk with him and, and truly have confidence knowing that he's the winner. In Psalm 27, verse 1 and 2, the Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the strength of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? When the wicked, even my enemies and my foes, came upon me to eat up my flesh, they stumbled and fell. <clears throat> so, here, the, what what are what are we reminded of? It, it's it reminds us that 
the Lord is our light. I mean, even in the darkest of days, and, and there, there have been some pretty dark days, and, and there are people that, you know, just struggling all the time, and, and I, I'm, I'm, I feel bad for them. I do. I, I feel bad for those that get in that dark place and it seems like they can't get out of that. And I, I'm telling you, they just look to the Lord. Look, He is our light. I mean, he's the one that lights the way to, to salvation. I mean, understanding that our burdens are taken, that sin burden is taken away when our faith is placed in the in the wonderful Savior who died and gave his life for us and and how we can find forgiveness and find joy and 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 he lights our path and he is my light and my salvation i mean he not only is he my eternal salvation my eternal savior but he he is my salvation daily uh, he he saves me from the the turmoil of the world he 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 saves me from from the the pressures of this world that want to crush you. I mean, he he saves you from the anger of this world, and uh, he he saves us from the 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 wickedness of the world. I mean, it's a it, it's just a a daily reminder that he is our light, he's our salvation, and there's no one that we should fear, and there's nothing we should fear. I mean, I. Look, I, I know this this virus is real, and right now it's kind of coming through Morgan County again, and and it, it's amazing to me. I, I still say that the reason it has such an uptick is so many people have gotten vaccinated, and the vaccination it, it is spreading the the stinking virus, and. Uh, and I'm not against you. Look, if you want to take the, the vaccination, take the vaccination, but don't take it because you're afraid. I mean, just don't be afraid. There, there is nothing as a believer we ought to be afraid of. And, and whom shall I fear? The Lord is the strength of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? Just don't stop living. Be, be who, who God wants you to be. Reach out to who God wants you to reach out to and live your life and, and, and live your life with no fear. And, and live your life in a way that honors and glorifies him. I mean, that's the battle that we've had for the last almost two years now is people have been just terrified. And so what, What they threaten us with heaven? I, I mean, really, I mean, absent from the body, present with the Lord. And so Paul said, he said, I have, a, I have such a struggle in my life because I really want to go to heaven. But... God wants me to stay here right now. And, and so whether I live or whether I die, I'm Christ. And so we do the same. And, and let's, just, let's just get out there and let's uh, just remember the daily reminders that God gives us. And th this world, when it says, when the wicked, even mine enemies and my foes came upon me to eat of my flesh, they stumbled and fell. I, I, God, God's got all of this. These guys that are banging their chest and, and thinking they're going to rule the world. Well, I'm telling you, God, win, God wins. God wins. God wins. God wins. And we, we never want to forget that. And, and so let's always remember God wins, right? And, and then uh, I, I saw here in, in uh, Psalms also in 117, kind of our marching orders for the day. Verses one and two, it's all there is in Psalm 117. Oh, praise the Lord, all ye nations. Praise him, all ye people, for his merciful kindness is great toward us. And the truth of the Lord endureth forever. Praise ye the Lord. All right, so what do we do? Well, let's praise him, right? Praise him, praise him, and why do we praise him? For his merciful kindness. Look, he, he could wipe us out at any time and he chooses not to. And so let's praise him for his merciful kindness. And the truth of the Lord endureth forever. So, somebody posed a question on Facebook the other day and I didn't answer it and I probably should have. But the, the question was, would God, would God still be able to speak to us if we didn't have his word? Well, it's a straw man argument. 
because the 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 whole the whole idea of God allowing the Bible to disappear and be gone and the word of God to be gone, it's just not going to happen. And here it says, the truth of the Lord endureth forever. I mean, God's word has been preserved and it's been preserved by God himself. And yeah, there might be a shortage of God's word out there that they might try to take and destroy it and get rid of it. They, they've tried that ever since the word of God has been around. And haven't been able to do it yet. And the reason being is it's God's word and God protects it. And so, you know, I think God has taken it away from people at times because of their disobedience and their unwillingness to uh, take and, and apply it. And, and we don't want that to happen in our lives. And so um, I just don't believe God will ever uh, well, he's not. He, he says it, uh, it endures forever. And so we always have God's truth. Let us be thankful for that. And let's praise him for that. Praise him every day. You can wake up in the morning and you have the word of God there. I mean, that there. look, if you had a fire in your home, the most important thing is is this. I mean, it's, uh, you, you know, you could lose everything else in your home, but uh, God's word is just so precious. And 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 we need we need God's word as much as we need oxygen in in a believer's life. And so let's always love the word of God. That's where we that's where we know that God wins. That's where we know that God's got things under control. That Jesus is the Savior. Jesus is the answer. And so always uh, remember that. And then I, I was uh, I read a couple of interesting things in Ezekiel today. And uh, first of all, I read about the dry bones. I, I mean. Listen to this. This is amazing. The hand of the Lord was upon me and carried me out in the spirit of the Lord and sent me down in the midst of the valley, which is full of bones, and caused me to pass by them round about. And behold, there were very many in the open valley, and lo, they were very dry. And he said unto me, Son of man, can these bones live? And I answered, O Lord God, thou knowest. Now, I don't know whether he was saying, God, you know that the, these can't be alive i mean there's there's no way or or he, he may be saying god you hey you're the only one that knows you're, you're the one that has power to do whatever you want and and I, I i need to say it out but first inclination i have is that that's what ezekiel was saying look he's seen some crazy things already that god's done and told him to do and and been a part of and and he's more or less saying god you can do whatever you want and i know you can and and again, he said unto me, prophesy unto these bones and say unto them, O ye dry bones, hear the word of the Lord. Thus saith the Lord God unto these bones, behold, I will cause breath to enter into you and you shall live. And I will lay sinews upon you and will bring up flesh upon you and cover you with skin and put breath in you and ye shall live and ye shall know that I am the Lord. So I prophesied as I was commanded, and as I prophesied, there was a noise, and behold, a shaking, and the bones came together, bone to his bone. And when I beheld, lo, the sinews and the flesh came up upon them, and the skin covered them above, but there was no breath in them. Then said he unto me, Prophesy unto the wind, prophesy, son of man, and say to the wind, Thus saith the Lord God, Come from the four winds, O breath, and breathe upon these the slain that they may live. So I prophesied as he commanded me and the breath came into them and they lived and stood up upon their feet an exceeding great army. <laughs> you imagine Ezekiel? I don't know. I, I, I just take it literal. I do. I just believe it's a resurrection of the dry bones, right? Well, so I got to thinking, okay, Lord, how can I apply this to my life today? Well, I think that, here's my thoughts, okay? This is what I got for me today. I, I think that there are times where, where spiritually I can get as dry as these dead bones. And I just don't want to do that anymore. I, I, I don't want to, to, to get dry spiritually. I, I don't want to lose a, uh, a, a desire to hear from God in his word and, and not to enjoy 
the the time, the quiet time and prayer with God and and in the quiet time of just listening to what he has to say in the word of God and and I think we can. I think we can get so busy and caught up in things in our lives that 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 we start falling away from where we need to be and and we need to understand that it's the word of God that gives us strength in in our lives each day and and, and it's the prayer that God gives us power to 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 face whatever the the situation is for the day and and how we we just need to let's not get dry all right let let's stay in the word and and let's stay in the the house of God and and be encouraged by others look you can get dry by just not coming around other believers and you know and and just busy doing everything else that's out there and and I find I don't know I find that to be sad I mean we can we can make our kids get so busy doing things we want them to do that even our kids become dry bones and let's just not be dry bones all right and then I, I, I read and uh, <clears throat> exactly man I, I know I, I want to share something at the end of this a testimony but wake up people wake up the churches you know it seems like so often people can get so caught up in in ritualism and traditionalism and 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 formality and they're so reserved and and come on you know let's we have things to be excited about we have eternal life i mean we have the god of gods taking care of us who said i will never leave thee nor forsake thee and he's the one that guides us by hand he's the one that we behold and and look at him face to face every day and we're children of God. And, and then look at this. I, I read this today too in chapter 38 and, and, and he's talking about Gog. Well, Gog is part of Europe and some would say Germany, uh, Russia, maybe some of that area. I, I don't, you know, I, I'm not, don't, don't hold me in all, all of this, okay? I'm not sitting here doing a thorough study on everything uh, before I do these devotions, all right? So if you're a, a great biblical theologian, just bear with me, all right? And just just uh, bite your tongue or whatever, but it seems to me like Russia area. And I, and I can see that. And Russia here is coming down. Gog is coming down on Israel. And this is what it says in verse 18. And it shall come to pass at the same time when Gog shall come against the land of Israel, saith the Lord God, that my fury shall come up in my face. For in my jealousy and in the fire of my wrath have I spoken. Surely in that day there shall be a great shaking in the land of Israel, so that the fishes of the sea and the fowls of the heaven and the beasts of the field and all creeping things that creep upon the earth and all the men that are upon the face of the earth shall shake at my presence and the mountains shall be thrown down, and the steep places shall fall, and every wall shall fall to the ground. And I will call for a sword against him throughout all my mountains, saith the Lord God. Every man's sword shall be against his brother, and I will plead against him with pestilence and with blood. And I will rain upon him and upon his bands and upon the many people that are with him, and overflowing rain and great hailstones, fire and brimstone. Thus will I magnify myself and sanctify myself. And I will be known in the eyes of many nations and they shall know that I am the Lord. You know what I wrote? I wrote those verses down in my journal and I wrote two words, God wins. God wins. Oh, you can, you can look at Putin and his arrogance and, and, and banging his chest and making all these deals with China and and zing wing ding dingling whatever his name is in china you know they can they can make all the deals they want to with the 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 ragheads and in uh uh you know in in afghanistan and 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 uh uh iran iraq and iran and and they can make deals with with Wooney moon and in north korea and they can all think that Hey, they're going to come in and they're going to destroy America. You know what? Maybe they do destroy America, but they don't beat God. And we're on God's side. And we ought to praise the Lord for that. And we ought to shout hallelujah for that. And we ought to 
give him honor and glory for that and and know that God wins. And even these nutbags in our own country that have declared war and, and all this evil coming together and Satan is 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 tramping around thinking, man, we got it won here. And I'm telling you, God wins. God wins. God wins. And so let's never forget that, right? I mean, we, we need to be reminded of that. We just need to, I needed to be reminded of that this morning. I mean, it's just, uh, we, we walk around so many times defeated and dejected and, and, and we walk around, honestly, I, I do this too, you know, we can, we can let our emotions get the best of us where we walk around like we're a bunch of losers, but we're not. We're, we're not losers at all. When, when we are walking with the Lord, we have the power to be victorious in all things that's going on in our lives today. We can still bring honor and glory to God, and we can go to bed at night knowing that even in all the turmoil, we can sleep in the bottom of that boat even when the waves are crashing, and we can have peace because God's in charge, and God wins. So there is absolutely no need to be afraid, and there's no need to, 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 to stay down for long, all right? Get up. And, and let's do what God wants us to do. And, and let's go out of here with our boots on, right? <laughs> uh, and then the last thing, I, 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 uh, I'm telling you if, you, if you don't go to church, you miss out, okay? You ought to be in a church somewhere. You, you need to find a good church that preaches the word of God, that, that loves the Lord, that loves each other, that loves their community, Get in, get involved in that church. Get plugged in with that church because you you miss out. And and look, if there's somebody that comes on here and sneaks a peek and and they're a part of our church and and you haven't been there a while and you think, well, that low life preacher don't like me anymore or that low life preacher is so judgmental. I, look, I'm not trying to be. I'm telling you, you you are welcome. The doors are open. Come back. Get in, get in your place and stay in your place where you ought to be. And, and yeah, I don't, I can screw up along the way. Absolutely. But you know what? We still love each other and we need to help each other. And, and I saw something last night at church that it, it, it brought tears to my eyes last night. I, I have, uh, I mean, Thane, I think, did Sunday school this last week and, and, and the blessings of being a pastor and what can a, what can a church do to be a blessing to the pastor? Well, I'll tell you what, last night, you, you couldn't put money on what happened last night. There, there was a, there was a young lady that came. I'd never met her, never seen her before. She came in and this young lady had three little kids with her and she came in and she sat down in the service and, and, we were taking prayer requests and she shared a prayer request with what was going on in her family and just heartbroken. And she said, I just knew that I needed to turn in and be here. I'm tell that sign that we have out by the highway, it, it, it cost a fortune to put that sign up. But what we saw last night, it was worth every penny spent on that sign. That young lady comes in and she sits down. We take prayer requests and, and people flocked around her last night and prayed for her and, and encouraged her. And just, it. I, I, what do you say? What do you say? I, I mean, it was, it was, you're right, Julie, it was amazing. Susan, you're right, it was beautiful. It, it was, I mean, that's what it's about. I mean, that is, you just take people where they are and, and you just try to help them get where they need to be. So the, the, the devil has lied to people. The, the devil has lied to people for so, so long that they think that that church is just a bunch of deadbeats that are sitting around judging others for where they're at and what they're doing and, and that they're believing a lie because that isn't what it's about. And that's not what our church is about. And... Last night, I, I was just so thoroughly encouraged by what, by what God was doing with our people. And it just, uh, and this is what it says, and I read this in James 1, verse 27. Pure religion 
and undefiled before God and the Father is this, to visit the fatherless and widows in their affliction and to keep himself unspotted from the world. And in this passage, chapter 1, chapter 2, it just goes on to, to, to show that someone can say all day long that they're born again. And praise the Lord for that. But your works prove to others your salvation. It doesn't save you. Your works don't save you. But I'm telling you, if you're born again, then your works will prove your salvation. And, and, and sometimes we start slacking when we get dry. Well, you need to get nourished. You need to get back in the word of God. You need to get back in your prayer life. You need to get back in the house of God and you need to be there and stay there. And then when someone comes that is truly in a desperate need, you're the one that's there to, to give that young lady exactly what she needed at that very moment. That is eternal, what took place there. God will remember the deeds of those that, that wrapped their arms around her, prayed with her, spoke life into her. I mean, there, there is nothing better than what we saw yesterday. Let your faith, prove, let your works prove your faith. And that's what, that's what James is talking about. Doesn't tell you that you're saved by your works. You'll never be saved by your works, but your works ought to prove your salvation to others. It ought to. God wins. God wins, so let's get out there because you know what? That young lady tells me that there are many, many, many more that are out there that need the Lord and Jesus is the answer and we need to tell them. And let's go live that way. Let's bring honor and glory to God and, and let, us, let us be what God wants us to be. You imagine if you weren't there last night, what you missed out on? I mean, I, I am grateful that I got to see and I witnessed what happened last night. That is what it's about. Those are the blessings that, that you get. And so, you know what, church family? Keep it up. The devil don't like that. And, and he's going to go after us, but that's all right. God wins. God wins. So, God bless you guys. And uh, Lord willing, and the creek don't rise. We will be back on here tomorrow. And uh, Lord bless each one of you.